Back in 1990, a little album called To The Extreme from a white dancing rapper calling himself Vanilla Ice would be released, and with the help of its number one hit single, Ice Ice Baby, this album would spend 16 weeks in the number one spot on the Billboard 200. Instantly, Vanilla Ice was everywhere, and he would even make his headlining debut as an actor in a film that is so bad, it's at times hilarious to sit back and laugh at. It's ridiculous cinema on virtually every level, yet the result is somewhat magical so let's dive into cool as ice a one-of-a-kind cinematic disaster Hey, what's happening out there, everybody? I hope you're all fantastic. Thank you for stopping by the channel. If you're new here, I'm Anthony DeJoya. This is Movies Never Say Die, your home for 80s and 90s retro content. Like this video if you end up doing so. Subscribe if you end up feeling like it. Now, I'm kicking off a series called Magically Ridiculous, and I figured there would be no better movie for the first episode than the musical comedy Cool as Eyes from 1991. This movie currently has a 3% on the tomato meter, and I will say that's fair because... This is a terrible movie from a critical aspect. However, I got to admit, there's sort of a guilty pleasure charm to this absurd movie. And watching it last night, we laughed at Cool as Ice a lot harder than we have laughed with many of the recent comedies coming out these days. And the overall experience was a lot of fun and filled with nostalgia. This plays like a music video in places, like a cheesy rom-com during others, like a basic action flick and very small flashes. And this uh, mashup of genres is just a magical train wreck driven by by an ultra cheesy vanilla ice who is just extra on every level. Kathy. Mm hmm. Cat. So you may be asking yourself, why did they make Cool as Ice? Well, you can sort of blame Ice Cube, Kid and Play, and definitely an overzealous record label wanting to squeeze as much money as they could from an undeniable flash in the pan one hit wonder. In comes the handsome dancing rapper Robert Van Winkle, aka Vanilla Ice. In 1990, Mr. Ice would sign with SBK Records and would release the album to the extreme. As I mentioned, 16 weeks on the number one spot on the Billboard 200. It would also go on to sell more than 15 million copies and like the flip of a light switch vanilla ice was an instant phenomena Following his album release, Vanilla Ice would promptly go on tour to open for MC Hammer. He would also date Madonna for a short time and serve as her muse for a few photos in her widely talked about sex book. Ice would be a musical guest on SNL. He had a doll made by THQ, a stream of other merchandise, and he would make a cameo in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Secret of the Ooze, where he would perform Ninja Rap, a song for the film that was accompanied with the music video. He was a spokesman for Nike. He also had a deal with Coca-Cola, so this dude was everywhere. This leads us to the other rappers turned actors at the time who were a very hot ticket in Hollywood. Ice Cube had just done Boys in the Hood. Ice T had just done New Jack City, Ricochet, and was working on Trespass. And Kid and Play had also done House Party as the headliners to much success with an anticipated sequel right around the corner. A sequel Cool as Ice would try to capitalize on by opening the week before in an attempt to grab any momentum that House Party 2 may have been carrying into theaters. SBK Records would branch off with a film division in conjunction with Universal Pictures and wanting to ride on the instant fame of Vanilla Ice. They chose him to lead the first film that would kick off SBK Productions. So uh, you have a first-time production company making a film with a first-time actor in the lead. And to make it even more interesting, director David Kellogg, familiar with commercial and music videos was also making his debut as a feature film director. Now, when watching Cool as Ice, it's clear to see that this was a project specifically designed for Vanilla Ice. This wasn't some script pulled off the shelf from a studio vault somewhere. Uh, David Sten was brought in to write a script of some sort that could work as a vehicle of some kind for Ice to do specifically three things dance, rap, and uses good looks, and uh, I guess you could say act as little as possible, so that would be four things. Uh, Sten himself was still pretty green at the time, only having written a couple episodes 
episodes here and there for TV shows like 21 Jump Street, Hill Street Blues, and Beverly Hills 90210. So it's no surprise that Cool as Ice is built on the most basic of storytelling tropes. Now, shockingly, despite Vanilla Ice's mainstream popularity, Hollywood players were not sold, something that made casting of the female lead this privileged honor student that ultimately falls for the charm of Vanilla Ice, something that was more than difficult to accomplish. So let's go down the list of actors who passed on the role of young Kathy Winslow. We kicked the list off with Lisa Marie Presley, Winona Ryder, Drew Barrymore, Jennifer Conley, Beverly Hills 90210 star, Shannon Doherty, Tori Spelling and Jenny Garth, Julia Roberts, Bridget Fonda, and Friends stars Jennifer Aniston and Courtney Cox, as well as Martha Plimpton and Uma Thurman and Nicole Kidman. None of these ladies wanted to be romanced by Vanilla Ice on the big screen. Gwyneth Paltrow, however, was very close to taking the role until her father just heavily advised against it, stating that it would be detrimental to her career, so she ultimately passed on the role, and in retrospect, you can say that next to saying always make sure he's wearing a con them, it's about as good as fatherly advice can get. In comes Kristen Mentor, a beautiful young actress who said fuck it and took on the role. She was just coming off a very small part in a very huge movie the year earlier when she played Heather in Home Alone, the girl who was responsible for Kevin McAllister being left home alone for Christmas to fend off the wet bandit, so she was looking for something to do. Shockingly, Cool as Ice would be given a budget of $6 million, $1 million of that going to Vanilla Ice. Not a bad paycheck for a first-time lead in a feature film, I must say. Production was relatively smooth, with roughly a five-week shootout in Glendora, California, lasting from early April to mid-May of 91. Once completed, it would be released in theaters under the Universal Pictures banner on October 18, 1991, as mentioned, one week before House Party 2, and that's when things would go downhill rather quickly. Cool as Ice would get 393 theaters, pulling in a meager $638,000 its opening weekend to land in the dreaded 13th place. The following weekend, House Party 2 would open number one with a $6 million weekend, while Cool as Ice would see a 70% drop its second weekend, pulling in only $192,000. And when all was said and done, Cool as Ice would only manage to limp out just under $1.2 million at the box office. So market techniques were ineffective in week one, word of mouth was killer in week two, and there would never be a week three for the Cool as Ice film in theaters. Naturally, it was critically panned. Director David Kellogg in the years after would disown the film, and the Golden Raspberry Awards would have a field day on it with nominations for Worst Picture, Worst Director, Worst Screenplay, and Worst Original Song. Kristen Mentor would get a nomination for Worst New Star, and the man himself Vanilla Ice would go on to win the not so coveted award for worst actor. That's all you wanted. Why'd you dance with me? To show you I could. To no surprise, Cool as Ice would also offer some fresh new music from Mr. Vanilla. The soundtrack would deliver four new songs, in fact, three of which he basically just performs in the movie. The soundtrack would be released under the uh, SBK label, and it would peak at 89 on the Billboard 200, so it wasn't really the same success that To The Extreme was able to accomplish. <laughs> Say what? Now, with all of that said, I will not at all claim that this is a well-made film. It isn't. It's goofy as hell without question. Vanilla Ice essentially plays a traveling rapper named Johnny. He has a small crew that hits the highways on their crotch rockets to what I assume would be perform at various clubs. One of their bikes breaks down in a small town and conveniently they run into an old couple sharing their same eccentric tastes who conveniently can also repair their bikes and provide them with lodging. And these few days of downtime will give Johnny the opportunity to charm the local honor student who just so happens to be the daughter of a former cop that's in witness protection who just so happens to have just been discovered by his former corrupt partners who are now out to get their money. So as you can see, it's a mess of different things thrown together, but sort of fun at the same time, despite not having any sort of narrative flow or character arcs outside of Johnny Wants Kathy. Oh yeah. 
I feel like the movie knows it's not good. The runtime is super quick. It's 90 minutes with credits. There are three full musical performances, a couple of lengthy montages, a few shorter montages, a string of these random transitions where characters are just sitting around or practicing their dancing or fixing the bike. Basically, it's a 30 minute story inside of a one hour music video. And it's amazing to sit back and watch it under the notion that the studio actually hoped that this film would be a financial success. This movie is the definition of superficial vanity and complete fluff, yet it's a beautiful train wreck watching Ice's cheesy acting. The guy is hamming it up, and he is what makes this movie magically ridiculous. However, he does stumble into one of the most quotable lines from 90s cinema, so I gotta give him that. Words of wisdom. Drop that zero and get with the hero. As you would expect, the film gets going with a music video, essentially, as Vanilla Ice performs the film's title song, Cool As Ice, Everybody Get Loose, with the help of Naomi Campbell, who delivers the hook. It's high energy and admittedly a little bit catchy as Vanilla Ice dances and sings to a shop light, and warehouse dancers enjoy a refreshing shower from the sprinkler system. After his performance, Ice gets a girl's phone number just to remind us that he's a ladies' man, and like that, he and his crew were off on their bikes into the darkness like a group of badass nomads to where I would assume would be their next club to perform. Who really knows because it's all just hilariously nonsensical. It isn't long into their journey that they break down giving us some fish out of water moments as the locals take in all the neon clothing and they stumble across the dumbest house in the world with an old couple that can fix their bike who conveniently lives a few houses down from Kathy. Suddenly Johnny has his eyes on the prize and that's when this movie has a slight glimmer of focus. It's only momentarily though, as Kellogg frequently cuts in weird scenes like this to introduce us to Kathy's family. We do get David Gross from Tremors and Family Ties fame, but he's wasted as the film's primary focus is the budding romance of the clean and tidy Kathy falling for the walking party pinata that is Johnny. The film wastes no time in giving us another musical performance, this time for the locals. Johnny and Kathy get to head out for a day of playing tag in a construction yard and making out and riding horses and motorcycles and laying in the dirt and making out and playing with a random hose because that's what you do when you have no extra clothes and you're a long bike ride from home. And of course, they share their deepest emotional feelings with one another. So where are you from? Around. Around. Yep, yep. Then it's right back into some more montages before the express final act plot and the exposition involving Kathy's parents and these corrupt cops that kicks in with no substance at all. Ice and his crew take out these bad guys in less than generic fashion before closing out this absurd movie with one final performance to just let everybody know they made it to the next club okay. Not only does this movie not go below the surface, it doesn't even scratch the surface. It really can't even see the surface from its position in the clouds and that absurdity is surprisingly fun from a comical mindset. It's nothing more than a silly movie made for Vanilla Ice on an assembly line. It's something clearly slapped together last minute to make some money off his instant fame and while it's far from cinematic, it is still a guilty pleasure watch to see what a film looks like when it has no heart and no narrative purpose. It's a 90 minute commercial for Vanilla Ice and it's magically ridiculous. So I'm going to give it a very well earned charismatic D. And that wraps up my retrospective look at 1991's Cool As Ice, guys. It's a classic in its own ways. Have you seen Cool As Ice? Let me know down in the comments. I'm interested to see what you guys think about it if you've seen it. Thank you all for watching as always. You guys are all fantastic. I'll see you in my next video. And until then, movies never say die. This is Jack Burton and the Pork Shop Express, and I'm talking to whoever's listening out there. Glad the war. You gotta become war. I suppose we have to register you as a lethal weapon. You trying to say Jesus Christ can't hit a curveball?